So if you've come from an object-oriented programming background, you've probably covered polymorphism, and you may be wondering, how can you do something like that in C? So let's talk about that. Now, in these next few slides, I'm not actually going to do the final C code. I just want to give you an idea of, of what it is we're trying to do just as a review of polymorphism. So the idea is I want to create an array of just shapes, not necessarily a specific kind of shape, but just general shapes. So this array is going to be able to hold multiple different types of shapes. So here you can see that I'm putting squares, circles, and rectangles into this array of shapes. Now, the way we calculate the area and perimeter of each of these shapes depends on the type. So the way we calculate the area of a square is different from the way we calculate the area of a circle. The way we calculate the perimeter of a circle is different than the way we calculate the perimeter of a rectangle. However, if we have polymorphic references, even though shapes II is a shape reference, we can still calculate the area and the perimeter for the appropriate type of shape because the array is not pointing to a generic shape, it's pointing to a specific kind of shape, and each shape will know what type of shape it is. So we're going to create a shape structure. We're going to need some information that's common to all shapes. So we're going to give each shape a unique ID. That's just an integer. That way we'll just use to keep track of the shapes. Each shape will have a type, a circle, a square, a rectangle, triangle, etc. And for that, we'll create an enum where we include a list of all the different types of shapes that we're going to implement in this enum. So the name of the shape will be a string. And then to calculate the area and the perimeter, we're going to need a pointer to a function that can do that. We'll have a function pointer for the area, and then we'll also have a function pointer for the perimeter function. And notice that those take a void pointer. We're going to call it this, and you can actually think of that as the same as the this reference in an object-oriented language like C or Java, where that shape object, now again, it's C, so it's not actually an object, it'll actually be a struct, but conceptually that shape object will want a pointer to itself. Now you get that automatically in C++ and Java with the this reference, but here we're going to actually have to pass that to the function because the function itself doesn't know what shape it's applied to. So by passing this pointer, we'll be able to tell the shape, hey, this is the thing I want the area or perimeter for. Ultimately, this is our C code. And notice we created define that includes all of these fields. And the reason is, is that lets us define a structure called shape T that just includes this define. And of course, the preprocessor will expand shape head into these five lines of code. This is our generic shape structure. But we can have a specific shape structure where, in addition to our shape head symbolic constant, we can add whatever fields we need for that shape. So, for example, for square, we would add a side field. For a triangle, we would have a base and height field, and so forth. To define our actual functions, so here's our square area function. I'm going to call it s underscore area for shape area. Remember, it takes a void pointer called this, and we're going to, in our function, we're going to cast that pointer to a square pointer called me. And then this is going to allow us to access the individual fields of the square. So the area of a square is me s times me s. Now you may wonder why not make this a square t pointer. And the reason is, is because when we call this, we don't know what type it is. We just know that we're going to pass a pointer to whatever shape we have to this function. And then since this is the square function, it'll calculate based on it being a square. And we'll see how that works in a moment. So if it doesn't make sense yet, don't worry too much. And our perimeter works pretty much the same way. It takes a void pointer, and then we create a square t pointer based off this void pointer, which allows us access to the fields of the square. And so then we could say me s times 4, that gives us the perimeter. So in summary, when we define a square, we need to have a structure that has the symbolic constant for the common things a shape needs, and then in the additional fields for the specific attributes of that particular type of shape, and then we have the area and perimeter functions that we need to define. And again, those will take a void pointer, cast that to the appropriate type of shape, and then perform the calculation for the area and perimeter. Now we're also going to use some helper macros here. And the reason is, is that it can get kind of difficult to always be doing different casts. If we have a shape pointer, then we'll define these macros that take a shape pointer as a parameter and expand that to cast that pointer to a shape T pointer, and then either return the specific field or invoke the appropriate function in the case of area and perimeter. 
These first three you can almost think of as a accessor method, and then these two would be actually invoking the function area or perimeter for that particular shape. Okay, so here's our actual code. And so you see we have an enum with just square in it because that's the only shape that we've defined so far. And then we're going to have a count field that will contain how many shapes will be in our generic array. Here's our shape common code that we put in a symbolic constant. Here we have a generic shape structure. And then here's the specific shape structure for a square, our two square functions for area and perimeter, and then the identifiers that we saw earlier. So let's see how we create a generic array. So first let's create two squares. And so we'll give it, one is the ID, it's gonna be a square. We'll call it square one. And then we're gonna pass the address of the area function and the address of the perimeter function. And then we need a side, so we'll say three. Now, it's important to remember, you've got to pass the right function here. So I'm, again, I'm doing a lot of this by hand because C doesn't have the built-in facilities that a language like Java or C++ would have. So I've got to do this by hand. If you create a class in C++, well, then you can define the methods and those come along for free when you declare an object of that type. But that doesn't quite happen here in C. And then I'll copy this and I'll say square two. And really everything's going to be the same there, except I'll have a perimeter of four here. So now I'll create my generic shape array, and that's going to be an array of shape pointers. And I'll also create a separate shape T pointer current that I'll use to keep track of where I am in the array so that I don't have to keep pulling out the indexing. So let's create a for loop. And we'll say that current is equal to shapes ii. And then we'll have a printf where, where we print the name of the shape, its ID, its type, its area, and its perimeter. And then remember to get that information, I say SID of current, and that should be a printf. And then I'll say S, actually that first thing should be S name. then the ID, then the type, then the area, and the perimeter. And now notice what will happen is each iteration of our for loop, current will be set to whichever the appropriate shape is. Of course, they're all squares at this point. And then it'll print out information about each of those. Now I'm missing here where I set shapes zero equal to S1, and then shapes of index one will set to S2. And it's gonna want us to cast that to a shape pointer to do that assignment. And we need to make those addresses. So let's compile this. And then we run, and you can see that we get, other than some misspellings, we get the output we would expect. But let's give ourselves one digit here, and then let's correct this spelling. Yeah, and that looks a lot better. Okay, so that's the general overview. Now, how do we add a new type of shape? So I'll add a circle. and Let's add two more shapes here. We'll also need to have a pi symbolic constant. And we'll need to create a structure for the circle. It'll have the same shape head as all the other shapes. And then it'll have a radius. And we'll name the type circle T. So now let's add our circle functions. So, it's, so our area is going to return the, a double. And again, just like with square, it's going to take this avoid pointer to the circle we're calculating the area of. And we need to cast that void pointer to a circle T pointer. And then we can calculate the area. 
So it's the radius squared times pi. And the perimeter is actually very similar, except the calculation is different. Notice the only thing I had to change was the name and then the return. So in this case, it's going to be 2 times the radius. And I need to get rid of that space there, too. So 2 times the radius times pi. And that should give us the perimeter. So we can define our circles. And then for circle 2, we'll give it a parameter of, let's say, 3. Now, we need to add our circles here. So, so I'm going to add circle 1 and circle 2 just like this. So I change the order up a little bit, but we'll do square, circle, square, circle. And then count is 4, so we should be okay there. Let's compile and run. And then you can see I have square 1 run with its information, circle 1, square 2, and circle 2. One thing I should point out is you may say, well, okay, this works for shapes with one attribute, but what if they have two attributes, like a triangle? Well, that's no problem because all you have to do is add that extra attribute in the structure for that shape because the generic square doesn't know anything about that. Whatever type this is, it can have as many parameters as you want, and you can use those however you want in your area and perimeter methods. So that's a quick introduction to how polymorphism works in C. Again, this probably will seem obtuse to you if you're used to C++, Java, and so forth. And again, it's because it's, and here it's because in C, you don't get that extra help from the language itself working with polymorphism. You have to do everything yourself by hand. And so you can imagine it is fairly error prone. You do have to be careful with what you're doing. Make sure you're doing things correctly. So that's polymorphism using C.